Welcome. This is the Knitting Pipeline YouTube channel. There's also a Knitting Pipeline audio podcast. And we're so glad to be here today. It's been a while since my sister and I have had the opportunity to record together. So let's introduce ourselves. Okay. I'm Gail, Paul's sister. <laughs> I'm not a knitter, but I am a quilter and do a lot of other hobbies, which you will see, which so yes. we're going to share some of those fibery, fibery options that we have or, or things that we get into sometimes temporarily and sometimes for the long haul. And you are on Instagram, right? Just G-A-Y-L-E-J-O-E-H-L. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last time you gave your, gave my email address. Email. I'm surprised you didn't divulge your phone number. <laughs> I didn't get any emails though. I would have liked to. I know. I'm Prairie Piper on Ravelry and Knitting Pipeline on Instagram. And our show notes will be, a lot of it will be below, but if you want all the links, those will be on the show blog because it's too cumbersome. I don't really know how to do it on the YouTube notes, but it's probably not that hard. But anyway, they will be on the show blog for this episode, which is episode 31 of the video we have i have 300 and some episodes on audio so anyway we're going to do things in a little different order today we're going to talk about a few things that we've done and that started with the retreat in kennebunk maine yeah. so gail was my guest at the retreat and she was the only non-knitter there but she fit right in with everyone else and oh. Yeah, so we ate a lot of, she ate a lot, a lot of lobster, lobster rolls <laughs> every day, in fact. Every time we went out, every time we went out to eat. And it was a great, it was a great retreat. Thanks to all of you who attended the retreat that made Gail feel so welcome. That was really yeah, fun. Was fun. Yeah, every, I, it made me so happy to see her going off with other people. And then she is currently here now because she came up for my Eagle Crest retreat. We had a good time there. Yes. And Gail did a little rug hooking demo because her main fiber craft for many, many years was wool rug hooking. Right. So I'll let you take over from here. Well, uh, let's show one first so they know what we're talking about. This is, it's not latch hook, it's called primitive rug hooking. You use strips of wool. The backing is either, um, they call it monk's cloth, but it's a cotton backing. I can show you what it looks like, what a pattern looks like, and then, or linen. And the real, the original rugs were um, hooked on burlap, but you don't see many antique ones because the burlap kind of disintegrates over time. So um, some people still sell burlap patterns, but I'd recommend if you want it to last, not to use the burlap. It's also harder to hook on the burlap. Um, so that's one. Let me show you what a pattern looks like. This is just a small little, um, but that's what the cloth looks like. And then you use strips of wool to hook in there and it's on a frame. And if it's something you're interested in, you could look for frames. They're not super cheap. You could look for frames. Here's one that I use in my kitchen. Um, you can use or probably buy a frame for somebody that maybe did rugging, rug, rug hooking for a while and then changed their mind or got carpal tunnel or something. <laughs> Which is why you haven't been doing this. Much. Exactly. But um, you can buy kits if, if you're not sure you want to stay into it. Here's another big one for my kitchen. It says sing a song of sixpence. Um, that's another one. And then um, you can do small things such as something like that, just to put on a tabletop. They don't have to be rugs. I've done pillows. Um, or you can do very small things like the little pansy, or this is a, a chair pad that I did. And then if you wanted to know more information, there's a rug hooking magazine. And I've seen this at Barnes and Noble, but that would be another resource of, um, you know, how would you, you get more information on it? But it's a fun hobby. <laughs> A 
yes, at the Eagle Crest Retreat, Gail demoed the rug hooking and it is like a cousin of, what was that other thing? Oh, latch hook. No, no not, not latch oh. hook. The other thing oh, I punch, did. Punch, punch needle. needle. Punch needle. It's really a lot like punch needle. And not anything like latch hook. Correct. Yeah, correct. And if you are interested, Camp Wool in Kennebunk, Maine has kits. They probably do classes, I think. But you could do a search and easily find it. The one thing that Gail pointed out to people is that it's expensive to get into because it's kind of like weaving. You have to commit to getting a loom. And that would be a comparable for the frame. Yeah, but the actual doing of it looks really easy. You're just, it it's a little like crochet, but pull the, you have a special hook and you pull it up. So yeah, maybe at the end, I'll have some photos of more of her rugs. We'll see if we get to that. I wanted to mention, give a shout out to a couple of quilting videos that I really like. First of all, there's a quilting social media site similar to Ravelry that's called Quilt Swag. And Stephanie is the owner of that and originator of that. It's in its beta phase, I think. And I'm still learning. I've put one project on there. I'm still learning how to put projects on there, but you might wanna go and I am, I think knitting pipeline on quilt swag. Yes, I believe I am. Then another great video, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Oh, I wanted to say that Steph and her mother have the Steph and Momo show. They're on episode five right now, just finished episode five. They're really fun. They're a very chatty video and Steph is also a knitter. So it's a lot like this, that they have knitting and quilting. But there's another video called, did I say the name? It's Steph and Momo Show. Yeah, but if you go to Quilt Swag, you can link, it'll link to YouTube. Another video that I highly recommend for quilters is Just Get It Done Quilts. So I want to make sure I get those in and give, give you those recommendations. Okay, let's do knitting next. And then I, we will have the timestamp down here or we'll tell you in the notes below if you want to skip knitting and go straight to quilting. I have been doing a lot of knitting, but I am mostly working on the same thing. But first, let me talk about the sweater I'm wearing. This sweater was made in the Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system. Is that the, that's, oh, that's the siren, the 10 o'clock. Oh yeah. First Tuesday of the month, if there's, if you hear it, it's, a, it's not real loud, but first Tuesday of the month, they test the sirens. So I basically used the formula and designed this sweater myself, buttons clatter. It's just a standard steeped sweater. The, I'm gonna get a little closer so I can show the, um, I like to put a fancy rib on things. I just add some interest and then I did this little pop of color in garter stitch and then it, this is all done in Quince and Company Chickadee. I did a couple of swatches and went with it. So the bottom ribbing is also like that. There's some short row shaping in the back. So yeah, it's a, it's cute. It's a good sweater. Okay, then I am knitting four. Uh, this is number three of four, Cobblestone by Jared Flood. And this one I have finished both sleeves and the body of the sweater up to the armholes. And I have now joined and it has a garter stitch yoke. I made sweater number two and gave it to my son over the Labor Day weekend. And I'll insert some photos of him with that sweater. It's a perfect fit. And he told me when he called on Sunday that He's been wearing it. It's been cool enough for him to wear it. And one thing he loves, this is made with Barrett Wool Co. Wool and Spun. And I did not tell him anything much about the yarn, but he said, the sweater is so light. It doesn't feel heavy, but it's really warm. And that's one of the characteristics of a wool and spun yarn. Every time I pick this up, I have to sniff it because I love the smell of it. It smells oh, very yeah. woolly. So that's in progress. And I would really like to finish that one and one more for sun number three by Christmas, but 
I have a little girl sweater to knit for Christmas too. Anyway, if you have listened to my audio, then you'll know something about this. My A year ago, I made these hoodies for my granddaughters. It's the Odette hoodie by Carrie Bostick Hogue. However, it is a cardigan, but my daughter-in-law requested a pullover, so I just did it in the round. Simple, simple modification. That's really the only thing I changed. The girls had outgrown the sweater in length, but not the sleeves. I guess I made those in a little extra long, but the body of the sweater. So I added three inches to each sweater. And I did that by snipping a stitch and right above the ribbing. Brave. <laughs> and pulled out a row and then picked it up because it's a bottom up sweater, picked it up, knit a knit my three inches, and then I did Kitchener all the way around. Now for the younger granddaughter, I had enough yarn that I could do it in the same dye lot. So it didn't show up a, a big, as a big difference. But in, in my, in, on Helene's sweater, you can definitely see, it doesn't show up as much here, but I'm sure you can see it. You can see where the line is. I added a kangaroo pocket and my notes are on Ravelry if you want to do that or on the show blog and I go into more detail on the audio. So I started this just maybe uh, three quarters to a half an inch in from the side seam if there were a side seam and then I used a three needle bind off to join here. And I think with the pocket and the embroidery it doesn't, you, you don't see that. My daughter-in-law said it would be fine if I just left it as is, it didn't bother her. But the back of the sweater then, I put a bird, I embroidered a bird, and then I got, you gotta see the little caterpillar there. I used bullion stitch in, I only used about three or four different embroidery stitches. And she has a little butterfly here and I use bullion stitch on some of these other, on some of the flowers. It's really simple to embroider on knitting. And I think these sweaters now have new life in them. Maeve's sweater has a little smaller pocket. I didn't really know how to go in on that. And hers was the same dye lot, but of course, since I was embellishing the other one. And then she has a bunny on the back with a carrot in the ground. It doesn't show up real well, but grass and a carrot. The bunny is from a book, a knitting book. I think it's called My Knitted Doll, but it's on, I talked about it on the audio podcast. It's in duplicate stitch, which I don't love doing. And I don't know, I'd probably do it again though. It turned out really cute. And I know my daughter-in-law will really like this. So now that we've shown it all to you, oh, and also, Maeve's has a butterfly on the sleeve. So they each have a butterfly, but she hers doesn't have on the, on the body of the sweater. And then I'm knitting on my Northeasterly by Melissa Alexander Loomis, and I got it out and I can't find it. So maybe we'll run across it as we go on through our quilts and such. Okay. Oh, and the Odette hoodie is in Quince and Company lark in the pomegranate colorway. You might notice I like that color a lot because my sweater is also in that color, but the, my sweater is in chickadee, the sport weight, and that is lark. And my daughter-in-law loves the color too, so uh, my son doesn't have much to say about color. <laughs> so I'm not always the leaves behind us. Oh yeah, we for, uh, Gail reminded me um, I went, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I was having company or having a meeting here or something, and I decided to knit leaves out of scraps of fabric. So most of, actually, there are a couple of different patterns, but the main one I used is in Botanical Knits by Alana Dacos. It, they're really easy to knit, and then I just strung them along there, and we have some command hooks at either end, and off we off I went. It was it was a really fun project. Didn't take much time out of the way, so they could see it. <laughs> well, maybe I'll take a photo of the whole mantle. And above us, you'll see the star quilt that I made. And I thought I'd be taking it down, but I think I'll just leave it up all year. It goes 
it goes so well and I love seeing it when I come in the room. Okay, we're on to quilting now. Okay. So I think it's been a long time since we, I mean, it was right after, right in early August, like maybe August 9th or 10th that we recorded the last time. So lots has happened. I can't remember if I showed Maeve's uh, doll quilt, but later Gail showed me, I think it was after the video, Gail showed me a technique. And when we did that technique, we made her another baby doll quilt. So I'll try to get those photos in here to show you. Hopefully we'll have time, maybe not this time, but gosh, I don't know, to, for you to do a demo on that. Oh, we won't. Yeah, I don't think we'll have done it. She's leaving today. Yeah. And so we probably won't. We'll probably be tired of recording this <laughs> stuff. But I also made another Fiona from Three Times the Charm by Leisure Arts. I have mentioned that book before. I linked it in the show blog. The it's just a favorite of mine. I think I've made three full size or baby to toddler size quilts. And whenever I make it, I make extra blocks when I'm in the mood. So then the next time when I make it, I already have a head start on it. I made a uh, baby size or yeah, it was a pretty good size one for a new baby. A friend of mine had her first granddaughter. So uh, the baby's name is Eleonora. And this is the, to kind of give you an idea, this is for my maker's quilt. This is the block and I'm embroidering her name and birth date on there. So it's a reminder, but I don't, I sent the quilt off and I may have a photo of it. I hope I took a photo, but I'm not really sure if I did. And the back of the quilt is a bicycle fabric from Tim Holtz. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of fun to mix kind of a more modern thing with the front. It doesn't look that modern. It's like a yeah. bicycle with, I think it has a basket in the front with flowers in it. So for those of you who might be new, every time I make a quilt, I make an extra block. Sometimes I embroider it with a date or something on it. Sometimes I don't. So this will just have the name of the baby and her birth date on it. Then, I don't like showing things when I don't actually have them here, but I just wanted to fill you in. So the next quilt I made was Cheryl by Villa Rosa Designs. And I got that. Um, I ordered this, it was a $2 pattern and it was sent by mail. As you can see, it's a postcard. So this is something that the, the directions are pretty minimal but if you were an experienced quilter, you shouldn't have any problem with Cheryl. The only thing is, I, I let's get Cheryl out, Gail. I did make some, I did learn something. Let's put it that way. Let me show you a little bit closer. But this, these are all the directions <laughs> that they have. So if you're a beginner, I wouldn't start with one of these, but they're great. I've, yeah, I've made well, one, uh, not a Cheryl, but I've made one of them. The uh, Villa, Rosa. Villa Rosa designs, and um, it was fine. Now this was this one was pretty easy. I think even a beginner, but could well I don't know. They there are a few things that they leave out that you might want to. Yeah, this is a pretty good size quilt. Okay, so you can let's try even it out a little bit. Yeah, there you see, it's it, it's pretty simple. So the things I learned, I had a 10 pack. I'm not quite done. <laughs> I had a 10 or layer cake, 10 inch square, which I thought, well, that's perfect because it called for five inch squares and 10 inch squares. And then the five inch squares, you put a border on. I've mentioned this before, but I don't seem to learn the lesson that it is more difficult than you would think to take a 10 inch square and cut it into five inch squares because of the little zigzag teeth around there they make a difference so i found that when i cut the five inch squares down they weren't all quite the same because i wasn't consistent about whether i was cutting i in the future i would probably just 
cut off all the little zigzags and then make the sashing a quarter of an inch or so bigger. But I learned a lot with this too because it was the first time I did free motion that wasn't meandering. I did an orange peel pattern design. I, I, I draw, drew it on here. I made myself a template. I drew it on. So I don't know if they'll be able to see it, but we could get a little yeah, closer so and they could so. see. It is not perfect by any means, but you have to learn some way. And I did practice it ahead of time. Let's see, oh, there you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it right here. And it it has the effect of that, that orange peel. It, it turned out okay. And especially after the quilt was, let me take it. Right. No, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Um, especially after the quilt was all my imperfections that were bothering me because I used a darning foot to do it. I should have used my walking foot. That would have made it so much simpler. And it didn't occur to me until I was done that that was that would. So the next time I try this, which I think I will, I will definitely use a walking foot because those curves are not that sharp. And the darning foot, plus I do have a new machine and I'm still getting used to the new machine and I love it because it has a bigger throat space, which I can do a quilt like this. The border here and the backing are fabrics that I bought at the Peoria Quilt Show, which if you live in the area, I highly recommend it. And there's one lady there that sells discontinued fabrics of good quality. The backing I got there, it's butterflies. I think this could be a gender neutral quilt. And then the binding I purchased on Etsy some time ago, it looks like a patchwork quilt. So I, when you cut it and use it for binding, it looks like a pieced binding, but it's not. It does, yeah. Yeah, so it's not. So that's kind of a little, um, it, keep your eye out for that type of thing. Well, after I finished this, I had enough fabric left. Now I'm done with that one. Okay. I had enough fabric left that I could make a smaller version and try to correct some of the things that happened with the first one. And so here's the smaller one. And on this one, I just did meandering I didn't try to do the orange peel thing and the backing of this and it did it did work out better the backing of this i got on sale at my local quilt shop peddler's white quilt company in the sale room and then in october they had a dollar off uh, all the sale room fabric from already marked down so i bought more of it because i just love it i think it can go on just about anything it's birds flying in this diagonal pattern and I just think it adds a lot of motion and then the binding on this is the same as the backing on the, on the other one and I think that some of the things I had problems with with the first one I did correct on this one so the, I don't remember how I did it whether I cut the I might have cut the sashings just a little bit bigger and then the next one is so we've done the two Cheryl's um, yeah, the next one is from Just Get It Done Quilts. I mentioned she has a great YouTube channel called Just Get It Done Quilts. Her name is Karen Brown. This is her stash buster number three. Should we take it closer? Well, is it number two or is it? Oh, yeah, you're right. It's number two. Number two. I want to make Yeah, number, <laughs> I know. number two. Stash buster number two. For this pattern, you use nine fat quarters, but I used more. And I, th this is the first time I've tried uh, wavy, wavy free motion, and I did not try to echo it. I just kind of followed the general lines of the quilt down, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. The backing is from connecting threads, and it's the extra wide backing. So. A couple things I learned here. Now, Karen, I just think she's amazing. I love her channel. It's very instructive. The videos are usually 10 
minutes average, I think. She had a recent one, sorry, my buttons clatter. She had a recent one on what to do with your leftover batting and she has really interesting topics. So this is her pattern. I think this is what I've heard quilters say is like a stack and whack where you stack the fabrics and cut them and then put that pile in one place and, and then piece them together. She didn't actually call it that, but she did cut a lot of layers at one time. I didn't do that and I'm really glad I didn't because I made a miscut or two and that would ruin. If, I, if you are stacking a lot and then you make a miscut, you're sunk. She did like eight. Yeah, I it? think she did. I think it was. So I did mm -hmm. three or four layers at a time and I had a brand new blade and my rotary cutter. This was really fun. The one thing that I think I would definitely, uh, war not warn you, but pay attention to, this was actually in the instructions and I missed it. You have to be very careful when you cut your selvage off of your fat quarter, because if you cut beyond the white or whatever color the selvage is, you it has to be at least 22 inches, preferably a little bit more that you have left folded. Otherwise, you can't get the cuts the right size. So a couple of them, when I cut the selvage, I had too much off. So I couldn't get, I think it was 10 and three quarters inches out of each uh, fat quarter for the one, I don't know. Yeah, one of the cuts. So I ended up using more than the number of, I think I used 12 maybe because of my miscuts, but that's fine. I mean, I don't mind that at all, but I do love the quilt. I've had it hanging on my stair railing. Most of these, a lot of these are sort of civil, oh, some of them are the Civil War, the real Smithsonian reproductions that Jean gave me, and it's just an assortment. So she tells you how to divide light, dark, and how to flip and everything. Are we finished with this? Oh yeah, one more thing about this one. I tried for the first time, I tried variegated thread. I only put it in the top. My only um, regret, and it's not a regret because I learned something from it, is that it's all shades of brown, tan. So unless you point it out, I don't think anybody yeah, really know. notices it. I don't know that it really made any difference, but it was kind of a fun thing. I only did it on the top thread, not the bottom. It was just, it wouldn't have shown on the bottom. No, I used a dark thread on the bottom and then I used the lighter thread variegated on the top. I did do a lot of sample, test samples on this because I'm working really hard to get my sandwich so that the bobbin thread, the tension is right, the bobbin thread and the top thread that they're, <laughs> that the, they meet in the middle of the batting. That's what I'm working towards. And I did quite a few. And then the, uh, the border on this is the grunge fabric that's left over <laughs> from that quilt up there and many other quilts I've done. I have this navy blue grunge fabric that really um, has come in handy. The last quilt of mine is also a Villa Rosa design. I might've said Villa Rose before, but it is Villa Rosa design. This one's called Lamplighter. Now, let me hold it up close. Yeah, it. you go up, you go up close. And that's Lamplighter, and then that's what the, the only part of the directions are, which is fine. Maybe the simpler, the better. <laughs> Did I bring it up? Yes, is it? That's it, that's it. Okay. Um, Nancy of Grace and Peace Quilting, made one of these for me when I was going through my treatments, which by the way, thanks all of you who have wished me well. I have a CT coming up on Thursday, my three month checkup. So uh, thank you very much for all your support. But Nancy sent me a quilt and it was this one and I wanted to make it. Now I will say, if I saw this pattern in a quilt shop, I it is not attractive to me at all. I. <laughs> The picture. The no. photo. It's just not. They need to do a little better job. But I went on their website and some of them are more attractive. I don't know if this is an older one, but it was only a $2 pattern. And I thought it would be a download, but no, they sent me this. Now my local quilt shop carries them, a limited line. 
they are very simple quilts. So this is my version of it. Again, I have a lot of this butterfly fabric because at the quilt show in Peoria, I bought it for $3 a yard and it's really nice quality. Then you use one full charm pack. I pulled in a couple of prints from other charm packs as well. And the, the one thing about this, they said you might have to piece some of the strips. Well, unless you have enough fabric or are astute enough, you have to piece all of the horizontal strips because the quilt is 45 inches. So if you're cutting a cross grain, you are not going to have enough fabric. And it was really frustrating. If I had noted that, I could have either left off one of the squares or I could have cut the butterfly fabric. I had enough. I could have cut the lengthwise, but it just didn't. The light bulb did not go on. <laughs> And on this one, I have a striped border, border black and white striped border. I, I love that. Closer. So yeah, take it up. And again, I used the gray and white bird fabric on that one for the backing. Birds flying. I, I have more that. for about two more quilts, probably. Or I at least that. one. Yeah. That binding. Yeah. On this one, I used meandering free motion. I wasn't up to doing anything fancy because when I do meandering, I just can zone out and not really think about it. See anything else about that. But just be aware that all those long strips, if you don't cut the length of the fabric, you're going to have to piece them. And it's only lacking a couple of inches. But I did it and tried to stagger them so they all wouldn't, yeah, they all wouldn't be in the same place. And then I still had a little bit of the problem with the charm packs because they the the squares are five inches. They tell you to cut that vertical sashing five inches, but really it was not quite long enough. I would either cut the zigzags off the charm square or cut the horizontal or the vertical sashings, the short ones, cut them a quarter of an inch or so because they were just too short. But I made it work. <laughs> In the words of Tim Gunn, I made it work. Okay, Gail, you're up. Well, we're up because of double the fun. Oh, yeah. we showed the top of this quilt. We made it for our brother. We're off his radar as far as video, so we're not too worried that he's <laughs> ever going to radar on a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's there when we need him, but yeah. So anyway, you want to, we'll be there Thanksgiving. So yeah, that's we're going to give it to him. We're going to give it to him at Thanksgiving. Let's see. No, it's over there. I'll see with your hinky pinky. Okay. So this is Double the Fun by Missouri Star Quilt Company. And the fabric line is Tim Holtz Eclectic Elements. Gail's made one of these. I've made one of these. And now we've both made this one. It was a joint. Should we go in front? Yeah, so we can see closer. It was a joint effort. Uh, Gail, I had already made some blocks. And Gail made blocks. And Gail did a lot. I wasn't feeling as well but this border I'd already pieced, so that right. helped. And then we sent it to Nancy of Grace and Peace Quilting, and I think you can kind of, there, you can see the quilting design. This is a good size. I don't know exactly big. how big it is, but it's a pretty good size. And this is the backing. Oh, the backing is great. It looks like old parchment wrap, um, like, the Bill of Rights or something on it. Show them the embroidery too. Oh yeah, let's show them the label. The let's label go. is large, but it's okay. He won't care. He won't care, you know. <laughs> He'll think that's how all the quilts are done. So I did that for that. It took us from February to August because we only worked on it when Gail was here, basically. Is that backwards for them? It No, not for them. Okay. It'll, it'll be okay. okay. So there's my blanket stitch. Made for Matt. Love always, Paul and Gail, February 2019 to August. <laughs> Took us a while. But we wanted to do a pattern that we had done before because yeah. you were going through chemo and it was, we wanted not a lot of brain power. Plus, 
Yeah, plus, yeah, these blocks are like 13 inches. They're big blocks. They're big blocks. So it goes really quickly. And I love the three-dimensional look to it. Um, we should probably show it I would from say, behind again. Yeah. I would say one thing is if you do a quilt like this with someone else, there was a challenge because at the time, especially, I'm more accurate now, but my... My quarter inch seams were more like eighth inch seams. So when Gail started piecing, there were a lot of challenges, let's just but say. It turned, but it I mean, works, it works out. You yes. can, and that was a lesson you taught me. We can talk about that. And this is apparently commonly known in the quilting world, but do you want to- I had to clue you in. You had to clue you in. Yeah, you would think that I, because we were just watching a video, Missouri Star Quilt Company, and she said it. Yeah. And I said, I have never heard that before. So just in case you haven't heard it, Gail. Well, when you have your, um, well, you can probably explain it better, but two, two layers and your, your top layer, you have extra fabric. If you flip it over the other way, so your excess fabric is on top, the feed dogs will take care of it. And it just, it works beautifully. It can't do miracles if you're way off, but it can do quite well, a lot. Yeah, it can really. Yeah. So. When Gail was Gail was demonstrating that, or I had I was putting something together, and she said, "Now you're halfway, and you can see that the top piece has more fabric. So now just cut your thread, flip it over, and put that on the bottom." And I was just that's a game changer, a total game changer. Yeah, there's no gathering or puckering, um, right, between the blocks. Right. Oh, I'll just go backwards a little bit. This is the stash, I forgot, I don't know if I actually said, the Stash Buster 2 is on Karen Brown's website, Just Get It Done Quilts, and it's a free download. Mm -hmm. And she has a Stash Buster, little genius. She has two, she has three, and you just download the pattern. And it was, it was the instructions were really good. I, I didn't understand it until I got into it, really, because I've never done a quilt that stack and whack way but once I got into it, I, I really, and it's 46 by 52 ish is the end. Um, they're good diagrams. Yeah, I, I recommend it. And she does on this tell you exactly how to lay out the quilt. So you don't have to try to figure, okay, how am I going to do this? So the two blocks that have the same fabric are up next to one another. It's, it's really a good pattern and I highly recommend the pattern and her videos. Okay. We are on that quilt. Okay. I think we should, the the hanky -panky. we did show the top, but I, did we show it before? I think no, we, but anyway, well, so what? Now, so yeah, you better. get to see it twice. It's quilted now. Yes. And it's you had, you had this, your local. I usually always add rows to mine. I just like them big. So um, this had Here's the added rows, but that it has the piano key border and the little inner border. Um, so yeah, and the backing is just a red Let's print. Let's it up so they can see the quilting. Um, my friend Missy's, oh, uh, two friends, Joe and Missy were here and I took them to my two local quilt shops and Missy bought this pattern. Yeah. Uh, Missy also has a rug hooking kit, so Missy, you have to hook a rug. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, and you you really struggled with the color to pull it all together. My I I pulled mine together with red. Yes. That was a suggestion, but I think this is the perfect one. Yeah. And this was a fat quarter pack you got on Etsy for a really yes, reasonable, a really good price. Really good price. I really you liked found it. it. <laughs> and then Gail has labels. We all have labels. We, we both have labels. I have a couple different kinds. Yeah, I like I your do. background too. Yeah, I have labels with my grandma named Mia. And then I have my, if it's not a child quilt, then I put You could put the name. date on the back. Yeah. Just the year. Yeah. Just the year. Yeah. That's all you would really need. Okay. Now, I think we're ready for your backpack. Oh, so, <laughs> when we were in Maine, out shopping, Susan well, B. Anderson carries one of these backpacks. It's a Swedish company. I looked it up online and I have a link to it. You can get them on Amazon. Nordstrom sells them. 
so yeah, other places i'm sure it's fial raven conken <laughs> most of us would say <laughs> i don't know what but i even know barely enough swedish that that's close i will not say it's exactly right but if you see the a with the two dots over it that's an A sound. If you see the A in, at least in Danish and Norwegian, if you see the A with a little circle above it, that's an O sound. Yeah, O. Oh. So anyway, we'll just call it the backpack. Fjall Raven is close enough. So if you go on, on Pinterest. Pinterest and look up Fjall Raven, which is F J A, well, I'll, I'll put it here on the screen you'll see lots of examples of ways that people have quilt, have embroidered around the logo. So, or Susan B. Anderson on Instagram. Yeah, Susan's done several, so you can look at hers. And then Gail, we decided each to get one. Angie got one, Gail and I both got one. Right. And you can do whatever you want around there. Angie did the Four Seasons, which looked really cool. Mm -hmm. I just kind of, um, I drew a little bit of a diagram of kind of what I wanted to do and balance the colors. But basically, once I started, I was winging it. Did you take it up close already? Yeah, I will. Yeah, well, now that they know. Mm -hmm. And then tell them about the fob there. That's... Oh, yeah, this is one of their little key fobs, and I just put it on there to unzip the little pocket. But it has a lot of nice features. So Gail practiced it. <laughs> I'll get it really close. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and they can follow you on Instagram. They can get a photo because you posted right. that on right. Instagram. Right. And she just she did practice and she got the logo the right size on a copier machine and then drew what she wanted to yes. embroider. But then she kind of and what kind of thread did you? I used uh, pearl cotton. Um, Susan B. Anderson uses um, flower thread. The Danish flower thread. Yes, and it has a more matte finish, and the pearl cotton has a little bit of shiny difference, but I really don't know. Um, and what the needles that were recommended for that by the people at Camp Wool were clover number 22. 22. Embroidery needles are called, but it's number 22 of the clover. They have a sharp point, really sharp point, so you can get through that canvas, but they have a big enough eye that they can care that can hold the pearl cotton. And your essential tool, doing oh. that, your thimble. Oh, my thimble. Yes. 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 Go yeah. through that canvas. I'm like, I needed a thimble. You have to use a thimble, although Angie didn't. I watched a video and the gal that did it had band-aids all over her fingers. <laughs> That would be a clue. Yes. <laughs> that would definitely be a clue. But your samples are pretty, I think. Oh, well. You could make them into a little coaster or something. Yeah, I could. They yeah. look really cute. So, yeah, I don't know if I'll practice or if I'll just, I, I'm going to make these, or I'm going to, I bought one. And I'm going to buy probably two more. But I bought this one for myself, and then my daughter-in-law wants them for the granddaughters for Christmas. So you better get started. Get started. <laughs> but once you got going on, oh, it, it was fast. I took more time planning it, and then in the long run, I didn't really even use the plan. And so. Susan, Susan didn't. She just winged it. She too, just so. winged it. But I mean, Susan wings a lot of things that are not. Are <laughs> they're not things the rest of the population can wing. Okay, so now you have my dishcloths. Okay. I did this while everybody was knitting at the retreats. <laughs> I worked on these and they're the old fashioned, um, just embroidered tea towels. And I bought the towels at Paula's uh, local shop, quilt shop, Peddler's Way. And what's this one say? Here a chick, there a chick. And then I did, now this, this tea towel, you did get it at garage sale, so it doesn't have the bottom striping on it. Um, but that's just a little, and with an egg. Yeah, I got a whole package. Yeah. Package but... of three tea towels for a dollar. And I've also done, I did one at, at home that I don't have to show. But I, felt like, I said I felt like one of the old fashioned grandmas doing the embroidery. And then I thought, well, I am a grandma. So <laughs> I 
second to them. And this is what the pattern looks like. And I also bought this at Ped Peddler's Way. And they had um, a lot of other patterns that I was tempted. We went there the other day and I was tempted to get them. But I do have a couple more to do. But um, I wanted them finished by Thanksgiving. Paula's husband, Bob, does all my dishes. So Bob will be using them, not me. <laughs> So a funny story, since we have time, I think, a funny story is that when I had my surgery uh, at the end of April, early May, <laughs> and I was groggy and on pain meds in the hospital still, I had four family members taking care of me, so it was a little excessive, but I had my husband and Gail and then my daughter-in-law, who's an RN, and my son who's married to her so but one of the times you will you tell us about the what you said <laughs> she was so groggy and <laughs> i went over to really really close to her face to check on her to make sure that everything was okay like i was breathing and she yeah because she was just so hadn't moved in a while and then she just kind of popped her eyes open and she said what's up sis <laughs> So I embroidered. We should have brought that up. Well, I embroidered. I'll, I'll, I'll get a. I'll get a photo get a of photo it. Photo of it. Yeah. But I embroidered a tea towel with two <laughs> birds kind of looking at each other, and then I embroidered "What's up, sis?" <laughs> so I love that. Yeah, it's my pressing cloth. I I tried using it for a dishcloth, and I thought no. So now I just use it for a pressing cloth and stone in my sewing area. One more thing I wanted to tell you about is because I like to. Oh, where's it? I brought it up with me. What you That's about? okay. It was the packaging for my new sewing machine. Well, my other one as well. The lighting is not that great. The lighting is positioned so it it kind of doesn't get that whole area basically. So I was looking for a light. The first one I ordered, it said we'll work with any machine, but when I got it, it actually was magnetic and there was no place yeah. to put it no metal where <laughs> there was metal on the machine but not where it would work so i ordered something else and i've i i have linked it i meant to show you what it looked like but maybe i'll just take a photo and stick it in but it's called razon r-a-z-o-n usb powered sewing machine led strip light set and it's this little like uh command hook type adhesive that you put underneath the throat space of your machine, just a little row of lights and they're LED and you plug them in. It has its, it, it is amazing. And it has a, a switch that you can dim it or make it brighter. It's just a touch that turns it on and it has made a huge difference in what I can see. I, during the daytime, I don't need it so much because I have a big walkout of our basement, the walkout door is right behind my sewing machine. So if there's daylight, it's not such a problem. But at night, I had trouble seeing and my other lamps got in the way. I have another LED lamp, but it got in the way of the fabric, when, I, especially when I was doing free motion and had the bigger quilts in there. So that that's something I wanted to show. Okay. So I think that's it for us today. We appreciate that you're here watching us and if you would subscribe, that helps the channel and give it a thumbs up. And also one of the best ways to, if you like this, is to share it with a friend and you can click down below on the share button and it will give you the share tag and it's already copied on your clipboard and you can put it in a message or an email to a friend and say, hey, you like to quilt or knit or do different fibery things. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you try it out? So thanks very much for watching and we will see you next time, which we have no idea when that will be, but it will not be real soon. Real soon. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll be working on projects and yes. then we'll have to show for yeah. you. <laughs> so thanks so much. Take care. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>